Hiya, and welcome to Dupla Art, where I take the duplicates we find during our Giggles and Gallimaufres unboxings and art with them. Today's duplicate is Donna Chick from the Chicks with Wigs Series 1 Blind Box Figures by Jack Specific. Whew, mouthful. That's what she said! Okay, <laughs> first of all, Steve Carell owns That's What She Said. He owns it. I was really impressed with this figure when we opened him up. I think it's better quality than I was expecting, although the eyes on this one are a bit meh. I tried to get the curl out of the hair with boiling water, but just ended up giving her a Grace Jones mohawk. That's coming off anyway, so chop chop. It's got quite a bit of rooting for such a small space. Nice, but without a detachable head, it's going to be tough getting all the goop out. First though, I want to take off the terrible eyewear with nail polish remover. I also took off the beak paint and then tested the feet on the bottom to see if that was paint or the color of the vinyl, and it wasn't paint. And it reacted to the plastic, so I stopped. Then I decided to give her a dunk in very hot water for two reasons. One, I wondered if the heat might loosen up the connection between the body and the feet. That didn't work. And second, I thought maybe it would loosen the glue inside the head enough that I could pull out the stubble. That didn't work either, so brain surgery it is. I stuck her back in the water to soften up the incision site. Bubble, bubble then slap down a cloth and carve in. Just to center slit through the area, pop her head like a coin purse, and rip out the insides. And there was so much glue in there, I had to keep dunking her back in the hot water to keep it pliable enough to pull. Once it was clean and dry, it was on to a few coats of gesso for the blank canvas look. The upper vinyl on this reminds me very much of the stitch figure I previously painted, in that it had a very nice texture, and it took the gesso very well. I then used spackle to seal the head wound. With gesso, paint, and glued on hair going on top of this scalp, the spackle is strong enough to fill the gap also lightweight so as to not to make this girl top heavy. I can also smooth it down fairly well with water and smooth it further with a really fine grit sandpaper after it dries. And top it off with more gesso. Now that I have a blank canvas it's time to sketch things out. This chick is going to be rogue of Marvel X-Men fame. But not just any old rogue recreation. This is one of my digital drawings I did a while back. I got on a digital art roll, so to speak, after pressuring myself to finally learn how to use the tablet I've had for more than just watching videos or playing games. I started digital art back in the pixel doll days and since had a very love-hate relationship with arting software over the years. When I got my tablet, I downloaded a few drawing apps, but nothing felt as familiar as my old JASC Paint Shop Pro 7.0 back home on my old computer. Ah, the software from the turn of the century. Yeah, turn of the century. And it still works, exactly as it's supposed to. No fancy bells and whistles. Just button do what button's supposed to do, and bam! Plug in a Wacom, and poof, happy place. Comfortable place. Functional place. No bloody A, B, C, or D. Program complete. But I digress. Finally found a great bare bones app that was inexpensive, and I get on a drawing kick from time to time. And I can save everything in layers so I can pull it all into my glorious turn of the century software that still works to tidy it up. And long story short, Too late. I wanted to draw Peacock. Yippee. I love Peacocks. The colors and the swirls, and they remind me of the 1920s, you know, the style, Peacock dresses, and... So I thought, why not? 
but I wasn't going for anything realistic. Cartoony is much more my style. I doodled on another ancient bit of technology called paper, took a horrible picture of the doodly bits, and got down to serious business making it presentable in the tablet. However, serious is not something I do consistently. During the artistic scuffle with the illustrating gods, I saw I have feet issues. I struggled for a long time with them to the point of teasing myself about having Liefeld syndrome. If you're a comic book geek, you'll get it. For those of you not of the geekish persuasion, one symptom is you don't draw feet. So you hide them behind props like rocks or crates or out of the frame, etc. Thus I got the silly idea to draw my peacock in a Deadpool costume. Down the yellow brick road of creative tangents, I've come up with a bit of a flock I like to refer to as my ex-hen. The ones I've currently done or started are posted on my Instagram if you'd care to check them out. I don't post over there often, but I have my burst moments. Right then, back to business. I'll admit right from the get-go that I was a bit chicken about a project like this. Cut that out, cut that out. I wasn't really comfortable doing major modifications to this figure, but I still wanted to turn it into one of my birds. I'm trying to gain the courage to chop off another one's head and sculpt a neck. But it is not this day. Today we are going to be adding some accents and eventually a tail. Per usual, I started by sketching everything out with watercolor pencils, which I was showing you while I rambled. Before starting the painting, I used some air dry clay to make the collar for the jacket and plump up the chest area like my drawing. I used plain old school glue underneath to help it stick and then added in texture with silicone tools and toothpicks, the usual. Side note, I was trying to use up what I had of this brand of clay. God, I don't like it. It's very soft when you start using it, making it very difficult to work on any details for quite a while. Then the outer layer dries fastest, obviously, science, while the clay underneath stays what I can only describe as gooey. It's like it keeps settling for some time, like slowly moving slime, and you have to keep pushing it back into place as the outside dries. But then when you add water to keep working, ugh. I also find it dries very spongy, and I have to let it soak up a few layers of watered down gesso to get the surface to where I can use my pencils on it. Straight from the bottle, gesso just sits on it and flakes off when you try to make a go with it. The water lets it soak in enough to stop it from flaking. However, I still have to be kind of light-handed because it can still dent if you press on it too hard. My guess is this clay is better suited for press molds or maybe mixing into slime rather than what I need to use it for. More of that know your materials I'm always on about. I'll stop the rambles again. Thank you for listening. And yes, I gessoed over what I'd already sketched out, but that's okay. I can still see it underneath enough to know where I'm going for the paint job. Speaking of which, I beg your pardon. a nice peach tone for her face, bright green and yellow for her uniform, nice warm brown for the jacket, with a caramel colored collar, of course, and deep burgundy and gray for her scalp. Let all this dry, add a couple of light layers of sealant, and bring on the pencils and pastels, my favorites. Woohoo! <laughs> the first round of pencil starts with my darkest colors along the outlines, really defining them. Normally, I start with my midtones and work up or down with the light, so to speak. That works great, in my opinion, when you're going for depth and dimension. I find starting from the air quotes line work and coloring out to the highlight lends to a more animated aesthetic. I'm not going for hyper-realistic here, I'm going for comic book hero. In addition, I feel I have a little bit more control of the blending by applying light over dark in this situation. When you spray sealant over it, even though it's a spray, let's face it, is a liquid. Yes, it dries quickly, but it reactivates the pigment in the pencils when you apply it. It kind of fuzzes out the lines or your edges, 
which is what lends to the blending when you do that. I don't know why or if I'm seeing things again, but the darker the pigment, the further the pigment goes, probably because it contains the most pigment. So light over dark helps contain it a little bit better. And an even better way to cut down on shading drift, as I refer to it, is to put all your dark tones down on the very first layer and then use them extremely sparingly on every subsequent layer. So I start with shading the jacket, making folds and creases, drawing in the cuffs of the sleeves, making sure to add a little bit of green shading underneath, and in with the highlight on top. Couple of spritzes with the sealant and it's on to the pastels. So as not to keep getting my hands dirty touching the pastels every time I need to change colors, I scrape out a starter set in my palette and get to work with her nestled in a paper towel so as not to goober up the body as I go. And I start with a very small brush so I can really rub the color in, get it to stick really good. For her wing slash glove, I used a dark brown pencil first to mark out the lines, dashing all the way. Easier to maintain control on curves that way. Next I went over it with yellow pastels, and finally on top of that with the darkest yellow pencil I have. Lots of steps I know, but with this area being so small, this got me a nice effect without having to build up so much color on the next layer. I didn't paint a base coat on the beak because I wanted to use this pumpkin color pastel that's in the set. Being that it's a darker color and only takes one coat, so no need to struggle with mixing up paint to match. I used a tan pastel next to it to contour the face a bit. And she's gotta have blush, but I used the bright orange up in the corner for that. She's a bird, so I'm not trying to give her human makeup. Beak is orange, blush is orange. Isn't that like a beauty roll or something? All right, on to the face. This was a bit tedious since she didn't already have eyes molded in, but flipping it upside down helps tremendously to see if you've got them even. And don't be afraid to erase, as I did more than a few times. I got a rough outline and went on to painting in the eyes with white acrylic. Once dry, I used a light brown for the base eyeliner. I'm starting on the irises with the light green on the outer edges first and then the darker green closer in. And darken in the pupils. To smooth out all the strokes, I use a damp brush and just work it like the watercolors they are. And it's time for a sealant spritz. Oh, after this is dried, of course. I had tucked her into a paper towel burrito at this point, so I was only spraying her head. No need to add additional buildup on the body. I shade in the recesses and edges of her beak on this next round of color as well as lightening up her eyes. First with a white pencil, and then the two shades of green over it. I used a fine liner for the emblems on her chest and sleeves. It's so much easier than trying to control a little paintbrush to make really nice lines. And it doesn't smudge once it's dry. I did go back over it with the yellow paint to straighten things out a bit and to brighten it up over the shaded yellow underneath, make it stand out more as an emblem. So how about that tail, huh? Yeah, well, when I first started on this, I thought to not make a tail, leaving her like a baby chick version. But once I had finished the paint job, I just couldn't leave her without a tail. Not to mention she's a bit top heavy, as I feared, and a tail will help counterbalance. I marked out and drilled two holes under her currently tiny booty, fashioned a piece of wire into a long tail shape. 
I'm making little bends on the end to help hook them in once they get pushed into the holes. I'm not gluing this in just yet. Once I'm happy with it, I wrap it in foil. Added a coat of glue and then pressed on some more air dry clay. After it dried, I played around with how I wanted it to look and actually added on a bit of clay to fan it out more. And I ended up liking a shorter tail. Using my flush cut nippers, I clipped off the excess and used the nail file to smooth it all out. I then glued it onto the body and with another bit of clay, made a triangular shape to cover the undercarriage and smoothed it all out. Quick paint job and some obligatory zhuzhing, and it's all caught up with the body. Here we go with the hair. As you can see, I started this earlier. That's because it takes a while for the glue to dry, but it made more sense to me to group the footage of the process all together. I looked in my yarn stash and pulled out these four colors. I pulled two shiny ones and two flat ones, figuring I would make a blend. The shiny ones break a lot when you're making wefts and you'll lose length and bulk if you use just them. The ones on the left are heftier and hold up better to brushing, but let's face it, they're dull. Ultimately, I went with the two on the bottom since I was going more for a ginger than auburn. You will always be remembered. Roll time. To get them ready to go, I put the two ends together and started wrapping them around a piece of broken plexiglass that I use for this kind of stuff. Just wrap, wrap, wrap until you think you got enough. Cut the side you started on. And based on how squat her body is, these didn't need to be that long, so I cut them in half again. Next is looping them on a bamboo skewer. Take the loop on one side of the stick, ends on the other, pass the ends through the loop around the stick and pull tight. Just keep going until you have a fair amount. Now I could have spent a lot of extra time pulling the individual threads of each yarn strand apart before brushing, but I find I lose more fluff that way. Instead, I leave them as they are and start brushing from the bottom and working my way up slowly. And that acts to pull the strands apart anyway, so why bother wasting the time? Once the yarn is brushed smooth all the way to the loop, I use my flat iron on its lowest setting and press the hair straight. This is where that shiny yarn really shows. Shiny. Must be bad guys. I use the same plexiglass as before and run a line of glue down. Cut the hair off the skewer and lay it onto the glue. Then I hold it flat and squish it into the glue with a paintbrush, making sure to get every single strand. Then it's just rinse and repeat with all the yarn until you end up with a furry hors d'oeuvre tray. Set aside and let dry. Once they're done, carefully peel them off. Trim off any excess glue and then cut the edge straight. Viola, a weft of yarn hair is complete. Repeat through all of them. and you're good to go. I also found a piece of green ribbon in my stash, cut a length of it, fold it in half, and run it through the straightener to press it, and it's ready to go as well. Starting off on top of her head with some tacky glue for the very front. It's not drippy like school glue, so I run less risk of it ending up down her face while I keep working. I switch to regular school glue for the rest of the scalp, 
it dries thinner than the tacky glue and start filling in the rest of the area with the white wefts. I fill in the red area much the same, starting along the outside and working my way up to the streaks. I got out a popsicle stick to help mush the glue all the way through yarn fibers, trying to make sure everyone's stuck really well. And just build up and build up. All the way to the top of her head. And top it off with the last of the white. I left her with the wigged out hair overnight to dry, then gave her a quick combing before adding the headband. For that, I used a drop of super glue in the middle of her forehead and put the middle of the ribbon on there, the folded side down. Then ran a bead of glue to where the white meets the red on the side of her head and stuck the ribbon along that line. Give her a quick haircut while that was drying. But once I was happy with it, I crossed the ends of the headband over in the back with a drop of glue between them and secured it in place with a pin while it was drying. Snipped off the ends and made a faux knot with them. Quick bit of zhuzhing. And it's off to the photo shoot. I'm really happy she turned out as well as she did. She's not perfect by any means, but damn did I learn a lot working on her. That I think I've worked up enough nerve to try a peacock on the next one. You art and you learn. I hope you enjoyed all my rambling and punning. I do so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.